Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're talking about solar geothermal. I'm trying to get some passive energy with solar energy so we can kind of get the best of both worlds and run this system passively off of our solar system that is existing. So we're kind of piggybacking onto our existing solar system. We've got two in here. So as we're adding onto this growing solar powered system, we're adding batteries and trying to scrounge up free batteries or cheap batteries to use on our solar system. We're also adding systems and kind of getting things situated. I got my timer figured out so it is running on a timer. I will be able to run water whenever I want. Basically every 15 minutes it'll run. It'll be off 15, run 15. 15 and off 15 and continue like that every day so by adding this little five to six dollar waterproof fan that was basically for a computer or something like that it's basically just a little exhaust fan I can use that to power my geothermal tube that I have underneath my walkway here and I have about 35 to 40 feet of geothermal tubing it was just a four inch culvert so this fan is about four inches in diameter it fit up pretty well so I'm basically paying for the fan by having free energy running and all of these systems are zero dollars to run so they pay for themselves very quickly after the initial first investment of purchasing your solar system so the reason I added a new fan to our geothermal is because I was using a cheap little 5 watt or 10 watt solar powered fan and I just kind of made a gasket out of this metal tape here and this was working well until we put our shade cloth up and then we lost all of the solar activity that was really making this crank it would spin but it would not have a whole lot of draw to it so it wasn't really drawing a whole lot of air and pushing it through and getting good circulation so i hope with this new system i've got we have a better setup and we will be able to run with better longevity and have a little more power to it and aside from having better longevity and power we are going to be able to run through the night we will be able to run this on a timer also paired up with our other system so we'll be able to run our water and our fan on our geothermal and on our compost heating all off the same system and i'll just be able to run those on whatever timer setting that i give them you can hear the rain setting in it's really downpouring on us here we've got a lot of bad weather coming in the last couple days have just been cloudy and rainy so i've been getting a little bit of stuff done in the greenhouse and i wanted to share this with everybody today so before i give a demonstration and share the changes we've made i'd like to talk a little bit about geothermal real quick so in the summertime we can use this geothermal to pull about 50 degrees out of the ground it may be about 60 degrees depending on how hot it is and how much tree cover you actually have the ground can heat up quite a bit on the top layers if there is not a whole lot of shade prevalent so more so than summertime we use this in the winter to warm our greenhouse because we can pull 50 degrees out in the winter time because we have this system buried about seven and a half feet underneath of our walkway in this greenhouse seven and a half feet is as deep as i could get in this greenhouse after it was already built so i had hand dug this entire ditch i made a video about some of it it was a lot of work but i am glad i did it because it is worth the effort i put in we draw some good temperatures up and now that i have a better system we should be a little more successful with that so let me put this down and we're going to do some demonstrations here so first of all we've got our solar box that we are running our timer on here and we've got our little timer hooked up. I had to rewire it to get all of these to run through the actual fuse itself. It was a little interesting wiring this up, but with one click of the button, we will run power to it, light clicks on, timer is on auto, so it runs 15, off 15, and continues like that. I made a little bracket for this fan and just kind of wired it on. It's pretty secure there. We've got all of this temporarily wired up, just kind of twisted them together and separated the two wires so we didn't have any sparks there. But we've got this fan, 12 volt DC, very low draw, but it puts a lot of air out. I'm going to light that incense and show what kind of airflow we got here. fan really has some decent airflow it just sucks that right down all that hot smoke should run straight up but it's getting funneled right down we're good four or five inches away right now so that's good flow let's go check our exits down here all right so we got exit one and exit two here i put a y right where the hose comes back up 
from our flat plane of seven and a half feet deep here so we split it into two so we could kind of blow some warmer air throughout the entire greenhouse wow that's decent airflow out of that one you guys can see how fast that's actually blowing out of there feels like cool air but it's probably because it's moving so quickly so let's check this side here and we are getting amazing airflow there that is awesome very cool stuff got good airflow out of both of these exit pipes you can't really see this one down under all the vegetation here but all of that airflow is awesome we are pushing that about 40 feet so this fan is strong enough to really move some air and it really pulls a lot of smoke from the top and i'm surprised at how much draw it really has this fan runs all the way through our floor straight down seven and a half feet and runs back up to those two exit pipes and i'm surprised at the airflow it gets with both of these being split up i tried to do them at equal lengths from the y so they're both exactly equal this one looks like it has a bit more airflow than the other but that is really wicking that away so we're getting good good circulation with that i'm very pleased with that this solar geothermal system is really going to benefit us this winter we are going to really really be able to utilize it we don't use it a whole lot in the summer because we have our windows and doors open because it gets so darn hot here in the summertime that we want all of that ventilation and we want to be able to circulate all of that air and moisture in and out so in the winter time we basically lock everything down you can see what kind of moisture we've already got condensing on the ceiling and walls of our greenhouse so i want to kind of check out the temps we're getting out of that tube we got to check on the temps up here we're sitting right around 55 degrees or so so let's go check out what kind of temps we're putting out i don't know how well i'm going to get a reading out of this because i basically have to take the temps of the surface about 65 degrees that's interesting 64 Let's try and send that beam way down in there. About 65 degrees. That's interesting. Since it's only about 50 degrees at the top of the greenhouse, let's see what this side says. Same exact thing, 64, 65, 66 degrees. So that's a very interesting finding. I don't know if it's just the fact that we had a warm day yesterday and now it's very cold today. We've got rain and we only had about 50 degrees for high. It's only about 50 degrees outside. So the top of the greenhouse sitting 55, that's not any shock. I just had the doors and windows open. I just found a spare window that I was able to use. I don't have it sealed up 100%, but I have a nice window there. So we're blocking a whole bunch of rain. We're not getting all the rain on our box, which our box did well, because we did have some water come in, but our box and the plexiglass protected all of our essential equipment. So we've got our little timer running, got our solar controller, timer, and these just, haphazardly wired up to this fan right now like i said this fan will be on for 15 minutes be off for 15 minutes and then continue on that cycle until it runs out of juice so hopefully those four 25 watt solar panels that are built for cloudy days basically will pick up enough energy to store in those two batteries and be able to run this consistently throughout the night and not have any faults on our energy system like i said i want to add batteries to this and i just wanted to share this whole update and process behind this this is just kind of a haphazard wiring i'm going to get this hardwired down and it will be kind of direct wired to our timer I've got to make some type of connection or a quick connection where i can plug different items into that and i may just use some alligator clips for that process i just have to keep them kind of dry and protected i want to thank everyone for watching this video and checking out our diy solar geothermal and the process of adding to and building upon our solar knowledge and our solar system so look out for the next update we have our copper tubing here i'm going to be wiring this underneath the door and i will have two pieces of copper coming out we will hook that to our water lines and i've got to get our compost heating system situated once all of this rain stops so hopefully within the next week this rain quits and we can get some work done outside